Yep. So I wish they would have defined how they arrived at their carbohydrate level because those are levels far above what I tell my patients. When my patients have diabetes, I tell them a prescription is low carb. It, it's like medicine because I don't see any effects on their blood sugars, the type 2 diabetics, when they're eating 100 plus grams of, of carbohydrates a day. They still need just as much medicine. They need significantly less carbohydrates to improve their blood yep. sugar control. The A to Z study itself didn't look at insulin resistance or insulin sensitivity as a split with regards to the study population. That was a follow-up study that was published a few years after, which then took the A to Z data and then explored inherent differences with insulin. Now, the insulin is another variable. So the first one is the amount of carbohydrates vary greatly. And what was called the low-carbohydrate diet in the diet fit study by any met, by any definition would not be low carbohydrate. It, it, wouldn't it would be lower, it wouldn't lower carbohydrate, but they definition. were eating up to 130 grams per day. The low fat, high carbohydrate group was eating 240 grams per day. So a difference of only 110 grams of, of carbohydrate is what defined the, the low fat and, and the low carb. That to me is a little that, too that, skewed. That's a few pieces of bread a day. Yeah. Yeah. So that was one difference, the carbohydrate load itself. Second, the way they looked at insulin so the diet fit study, actually, when they were splitting the group up with regards to insulin sensitivity, they were looking at, as the comment noted, um, what they were actually looking at was something called the insulin at 30 minutes. In contrast, the A to Z post hoc analysis paper, they looked at fasting insulin levels. Now, it would be debatable which one is an actual marker of insulin resistance. I actually would lean on the fasting insulin personally. The 30 minute, in, the 30 minute insulin is interesting, but when you don't have the subsequent time points, you can't determine either a, what's called the Hayashi method or the Kraft method to determine insulin resistance. Those have to be multi-point measurements over two to three hours. Um, in the diet fit study, the amount of carbohydrates as a percent of calories was about 30%. So 30% of their calories were coming from carbohydrates. That's not particularly low carb. In the A to Z study, it's interesting to note because one of the diets actually matched that perfectly, and that was the zone diet. So in the A to Z study, the zone diet was 30% carbohydrate, just like what was called the low carbohydrate diet in the diet fit study. And it's interesting because the zone diet, which was 30% carbohydrates, had no significant weight difference. The zone diet did not have a significant change in body it's weight. figure two of the study when we yeah. post it. Yep. The Atkins diet, or the low-carb diet, did. And so this, once again, we were sort of challenged with regards to how we compare the carbohydrates, but I'd intended to leave that topic. The insulin, how they measured insulin and insulin resistance, differed between these studies. And I strongly contend fasting insulin is a better marker than just insulin at 30 minutes of insulin sensitivity and insulin resistance. If insulin at 30 minutes had been matched with other measurements at 60 minutes, 90 minutes, 120 minutes, and so on, then that would be more useful perhaps than fasting insulin.